नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू सेशन 31 वन ऑफ अवर कोर्स ऑन मैन्युफैक्चरिंग गाइडलाइंस फॉर प्रोडक्ट डिजाइन सो वी हैव कंप्लीटेड सिक्स वीक्स ऑफ डिस्कशन एंड वी आर लेफ्ट विद टू वीक्स ऑफ डिस्कशन ऑन दिस वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक सो इन द लास्ट सिक्स वीक्स वट हैज बीन अवर टारगेट अवर टारगेट हैज बीन टू ब्रीफली रिव्यू द मैनुफैक्चरिंग प्रोसेस to briefly review the engineering materials and then we have to establish a correlation between the materials and the processes and if you see today on the slide the title is induction welding and the material is plastics so in our course in the very beginning during first week and second week of our discussion we focused primarily on the basic aspects of manufacturing and basic aspects of engineering materials why because we have to combine the two things together we have to take a material and then we have to select a process and accordingly we have to match the two things together to make a tangible product so here we see that induction welding of plastics is an important topic why because plastics as we see are being used widely for a wide variety of applications and if maybe i can give you an assignment right now you just look around you you are you are visualizing or you are maybe uh, listening to this session on your laptop or on a desktop or on your mobile phone so maybe one of the applications you can see as a cabinet of a desktop or a body of a laptop or a cover of a mobile phone and if you start looking around you you will see a number of other plastic products and it is very very difficult to make a plastic product as a single molded part although it is our target that we must try to minimize the joining operations for the plastics but our target usually sometime is not met why because of the design complexity because the plastics may sometimes be required to be joined with other materials so depending upon the design requirement we have to select a process for joining of plastics so i was just discussing that what we have already discussed in our course we have already discussed the basic aspects of manufacturing and materials and then we have learned some soft techniques like the design for manufacturing guidelines we have seen design for x robust design and finally we shifted towards the processes we have seen that what are the various design guidelines for various types of processes if you can remember we have discussed the design guidelines for sand casting process or the products that will be made by sand casting we have already discussed the design guidelines for products to be made by die casting process products to be made by ejection molding products to be made by compression molding so we have tried to see that how the product design must be changed in order to fabricate the products easily that is what we have already understood by now so how to form the products then we shifted our attention towards how to machine the products and finally we shifted our attention towards how to join the different parts together to make a tangible product and in that regard we have already finished one week of discussion that was the sixth week in which we first reviewed the various joining processes then we discussed about the adhesive joining technique for joining of adherents what are the design guidelines what type of joint we must choose what type of loading environments necessitate a specific type of joint design we have already seen the mechanical fastening guidelines we have already seen the guidelines for riveting so we have seen that what are the standard processes for joining the different parts together to fabricate a product when we are finalizing the design of our product we have to keep in mind that how the different parts that make up the product will be joined together and we must ensure that joining process is trouble free that joining process is easy that joining process is a uh, maybe uh, we can say easily done already easy and easily done and may be error free i wanted to use the word error free that there is no error during we during the joining process for two or three different components and for that reason we have already discussed that different processes are already 
there and if you take an example of the maybe again I am taking an example of the camera which is recording this session. So, in the camera if we say I can easily see from here there are uh, different parts maybe there are 25 to 30 different parts. Some of them are made in plastic, others are made in metals. So, how to join all these parts together to make this assembly is a challenging task. So, when we are designing the various parts of this camera, we have to take into account that how these parts will be joined together to make a final product which in this case is a camera. Therefore, we must learn, we must know, we must understand that what are the various types of joining processes and what are the guidelines that we must keep in mind while designing the parts. So, in that context only with that reference what we have already discussed, we are carrying forward our discussion regarding joining because joints are the most important parts in any product design and again I am repeating the thing that joints are the most susceptible to failure also. If we take an example of our body also, whenever we have an accidental fall, always there is a chances that we may get injury at one or the other joint in the body. So, therefore, joints are most susceptible to failure and therefore, they must be joined properly in order to ensure a trouble free life for the product in which we are using the using these joints. So, in that regard our title today of induction welding is very very important. So, there are two aspects here, one aspect is to just have a brief review of the induction welding process and the second is how induction welding can be used for joining of plastic parts, although it can also be used for joining of the metallic parts also and is a well established process. So, whatever processes we have covered till now such as the riveting, mechanical fastening, welding all these processes are well established for metals, but it is difficult to weld the plastics using the standard welding processes such as the electric arc welding or the gas welding. Why? Because the kind of temperatures that we see in arc welding and gas welding. In arc welding normally we get a temperature of 6000 degree centigrade depending upon the setting of the current and the voltage. And in case of gas welding also depending upon the type of flame that we have produced we may get a temperature up to 3300 degree centigrade of course that will depend upon the type of fuel gas that we have selected uh, depending upon the calorific value or the maybe the heat content of the uh, maybe we can say the temperatures that can be achieved with a particular type of gas or the fuel gas the temperatures may vary, but in general we can say around 3000 degree centigrade is achieved in gas welding. So, now you can see 6000 degree centigrade in arc welding, 3000 degree centigrade in gas welding and our plastics cannot sustain those type of temperatures. So, therefore, we need to look for additional processes which can be used for processing of in, in general processing and in particular joining of the plastic parts. So, let us today revise the induction welding process for joining of plastics as well as try to look at maybe 2 or 3 or 4 guidelines which may help us to design the parts which are going to be joined for plastics or which are going to be joined for making the final product. Now, let us quickly I think the introduction has been a bit longer today. So, let us now quickly jump to the topic because we are going to start this discussion for the complete week. So, this introduction is not only for this particular lecture that is session number 31, but it is for the complete week starting session 31 to session 35. We will be looking at different types of processes which are used for plastics. Today our target is induction welding, tomorrow we may discuss vibration welding, ultrasonic welding or maybe microwave heating process for joining of plastics. So, we will cover all these topics in the subsequent session. So, let us start our discussion now. As we can see joining 
of molded plastic parts is required when the finished assembly is now first we are trying to understand that why the joining of plastic parts is at all required already we have seen if you have gone through the sessions you may have seen that injection molding is one process for making the plastic parts compression molding can give us even bigger parts there is a technique called rotational molding there is a technique called thermoforming so we have so many processes which can be used for making the plastic parts why do we need to join we must directly make the plastic part so there have to be some reasons that why joining of plastics is required so here we are trying to answer that question that is a very very important question that why joining the plastics or why joining of plastics is necessary so joining of molded plastic parts is required when the finished assembly is first reason joining assembly is too large or the product is too large or the second is it is very very complex the design is such that it cannot be made to a near net shape using any one of the plastic forming processes such as injection molding or compression molding so it is complex part it is very large part to mold in one piece as i have already told near net using a standard plastic forming process it is difficult to make so two things one is it is very large large assembly second one is complex shape complexity is there third requires disassembly and reassembly to facilitate the maintenance sometimes we may have to disassemble the parts so that to facilitate that we require joining of parts and often to reduce cost to produce a single large molded plastic component so the cost is equally important so what is coming out of here there are four major there can be minor factors also but four major factors that necessitate the joining of the plastic parts two large assemblies complex geometries this facilitate the maintenance or serviceability using disassembly and assembly again and finally the cost of manufacturing a large single part usually forces us makes it necessary for us to make the plastic parts in small components and then join them together to make a complete assembly of the product so i think this sentence clearly establishes the importance of joining for the plastic parts this is same as in case of metals the plastic parts to be joined can be of the same or dissimilar materials so you may have a thermoplastic part and a thermo setting part you may require to join them you may require to join as we will see in today's uh, lecture only the applications of induction welding of plastic where we will see a plastic is joined to a metallic part so all those things may be the materials that we are joining together may be similar or they may be dissimilar also so thermoplastics as i have already told there are two categories of plastics basically broadly thermoplastics and thermosets so thermoplastics is the category which can be joined by this welding processes so thermoplastics are generally joined by the welding processes in which the part surfaces it is showing the procedure for welding or joining so part surfaces are melted first step alloying polymer chains to inter diffuse so when you melt the parts at their interface the polymer chains inter diffuse and make a joint so that is basically the mechanism of joining of the thermoplastic polymers or thermoplastic parts important world welding processes which we will, we will be trying to cover during our discussion this is the first one induction which we are trying to cover today ultrasonic we will try to cover in the next session then vibration welding and spin welding so these are the welding techniques which can be used for the process of joining of plastics and as we have already seen that the plastics may be joined among themselves also or they may be joined to the other materials also
So, let us now quickly revise the induction welding of plastics. So, induction welding uses electromagnetic induction to heat the work piece. So, as you know in any welding process as we have defined welding as a process to join two similar or dissimilar materials with the application of heat with or without the application of pressure. So, here also heat is an important integral element for joining the two plastic parts. So, induction welding uses electromagnetic induction to heat. So, the heat source is in, in case of induction welding is the electromagnetic induction. So, that it will through electromagnetic induction we will put the work piece in the coil and through the induction welding electromagnetic induction effect it will get heated and because of the heat we will be able to form the joint. So, the welding system usually contains an induction coil as I have shown this is the induction coil and we place our work piece inside. So, it usually contains an induction coil that is energized with a radio frequency electric current. So, we pass the current through the coil so that in order to produce the electromagnetic induction effect a high frequency electromagnetic field is generated that acts on either the electrically conductive. Now, our work piece may be either it may be electrically conductive or it may be ferromagnetic. So, suppose we take an example of a coil and we place our work piece inside the coil. So, this work piece must either be conductive or this work piece may be a ferromagnetic material. So, that the electromagnetic induction effect can be introduced. So, there can be different sources of heating the work piece. In case of arc welding, we use an electric arc to heat the work piece. In case of gas welding, we use the flames produced by the fuel gas to produce the heat. In case of maybe vibration assisted welding, we will use the vibrations to produce the heat. In case of friction welding, we use the principle of friction to produce the heat between the two surfaces to be joined together. In induction welding, we use the electromagnetic induction effect to produce the heat in the work piece. So, the sources of heat may vary, but the basic aspect is that we have to form a solid joint between the two parts. And these two parts may be plastics, these can be metals or metal to wood or metal to plastic, different types of material combinations may be used to form the joints. So, we have seen the basic here the electromagnetic induction effect will be used to produce the heat between the two surfaces to be joined together. Now, in electrically conductive work piece this is just simply trying to explain the mechanism that if the work piece is electrically conductive how the joint will be formed and if the work piece is ferromagnetic how the joint will be formed. Let us try to understand that with these two sentences. In electrically conductive work piece the main heating effect is resistive heating resistive heating due to induced current which is also referred to as the eddy current. So, resistive heating is the mechanism for electrically conductive work piece and for ferromagnetic work piece the heating is primarily caused due to the hysteresis effect. So, the hysteresis effect is the reason for producing heat in case of the ferromagnetic materials as the electromagnetic field distorts the magnetic domains of the work piece. So, you can understand that two different types of work piece material we can use electrically conductive pieces as our work piece material in induction welding process or we can use ferromagnetic materials to make the weld using the induction welding process. Now, this is very easily explaining the process of induction welding. So, suppose this is uh, the work pieces we can see these are the two plates plate number 1, plate number 2 and this is the susceptor material sometimes in order to facilitate the process of welding we may use a susceptor. So, this is with the help of a susceptor this will be pressed down the susceptor will come here in this region and we will be able to form a joint between the first and the second work piece and this is the coil which will produce the induction effect and here we can see that the conducting fiber as the reinforcement. So, this is first 
part this is second part they have to be joined here so this is an important part that why the susceptor is required and here there is no susceptor why because in the previous slide we have seen that either the workpiece must be electrically conductive or the workpiece must be a ferromagnetic material so suppose my point number 1 is non conducting and this also is non conducting so we don't have a electrically conducting work pieces so when these work pieces are not electrically conducting then in that case we will use a susceptor material to introduce the induction effect and specifically when we talk about the polymers they may be electrically non conducting conducting polymers are very few and are in many of them are still in the research stage so when our polymers or plastics are non conducting we may like to put a susceptor which will facilitate the joining at the interface so non conducting fiber as reinforcement so we will use so in this in case of composites we have fibrous reinforcement also so if our fiber also uh, i think uh, we have already discussed the concept of composites in this course as in the very beginning in engineering uh, materials we have just introduced the concept of composites so what is a composite in a composite there may be fibers and polymers and we call it as a polymer matrix composite so if the polymer is non conducting it is not electrically conducting as well as the fiber that we have introduced in the polymer is also non conducting therefore it will necessitate the use of a susceptor but suppose in a composite material if we have a conducting fiber so in this case if i draw it again and try to understand the concept of fiber so there are continuous fibers that are running in this and these fibers are what they are conducting so if the fibers are conducting in that case what we will do we this use of susceptor is not required we can directly join the two pieces which have the conducting fiber as the reinforcement especially in case of composite materials we can join them together so the basic summary is that we can join the electrically conducting or ferromagnetic material using the concept of induction welding and polymers usually are poor conductors of electricity and therefore we need to use a susceptor to join the polymer parts or plastic parts now here we can see the applications of induction welding of plastics frequently used for welding large or irregular shaped parts made now we can see irregular shaped parts when the shape is not regular therefore we need to produce them in two or three different parts and which we need to combine together so these parts individual parts may be made by injection molding blow molding rotational molding or they can be thermoformed so we can use any of the plastic forming process to make the individual parts and then we can combine these parts using the process of induction welding to make a complete product now where are the applications let us see extensively used in sealing plastic coated metal caps to the plastic bottles so this is one example how the plastic coated metal caps are put on the plastic bottles joining of cross linked pe pipes so polyethylene pipes can be joined together using the induction welding process then welding metal grills to the front of the loud speaker units so you have a loud speaker unit and you have a metallic front grill it can be welded to the body using the induction welding process so this we can see different induction welding parts so many times one plastic part we want to put concentrically on the other we can have a induction coil on the top and heat it locally and form a joint so we can use induction welding process for joining of plastic parts now let us see few design guidelines quickly there are not many available in the open literature some of them are under the patent or ipr protection but whatever is available in the general literature which we will that we will try to understand now what are the design guidelines now let us see first important design guideline is the coupling distance that is the space between the work coil and the bond line should remain constant so suppose 
this is my coil and then we put our work piece inside the coil to heat it and once we are heating it the joint line should remain at a constant distance from the coil so the coupling distance that is the space between the work coil and the bond line should remain mostly constant secondly we can see the joint line should be the joint line should be as close as possible to the work coil so we can see the work coil is going to produce the electromagnetic induction effect so our joint line where our two parts are going to join together this joint line must be close to the close to the work coil because we need to heat at the joining at the joint interface to produce the joint so therefore it must be close to that work coil the irregularities that prevent the work coil from being located close to the joint line should be avoided so we must redesign our part if there are few features which force us to keep the work coil away from the joint line all those design features must be modified in order to ensure that the work coil is close to the joint line or the bond line so let us see a uh, try to understand this important guideline with the help of an example now here we see we are trying to form a joint here now this joint is in this total assembly is of three parts this is part number 1 this is part number 2 and this is part number 3 so we are making the joint here section a so this is the situation at section a a coil will be somewhere around this so we want to redesign this part so that we are able to satisfy our guideline number 2 the joint line should be as close as possible to the working coil now it can be redesigned we can see it is still made in three parts but the part number 1 the design has been now changed this is my part number 2 and the joint we are going to make is here and this is a point uh, part number 3 so here we can see our joints from the inner periphery have gone to the outer periphery the joint is now being done here which may be close to the work coil so recommended and not recommended joint designs for induction welding are shown in this picture so in this way this is just one example we may redesign our parts so that we are able to satisfy this requirement and similarly we can i think this is clear i need not repeat it again the parts remaining same only the design of the parts has been changed in order to satisfy the design guideline now this is another design guideline joints should be designed in shear rather than in peel or butt so whenever we are designing a joint which has to be made by the induction welding process specially for plastics they may be designed for shear now this is the design for shear load is acting in this direction and in this direction whereas the other two joints that we see here these two joints these are not in shear maybe they are in peel or butt mode so that is what we can say that we must avoid the joints which are going to be loaded under the peeling forces or under the uh, uh, tensile forces we must try to try design the joints so that they are under shear so joint should be designed in shear rather than peel or but more so recommended and not recommended joint designs for induction welding are shown in the figure so these are few guidelines which we must keep in mind when the plastic parts are being joined using the induction welding process so three things we have tried to address today the first thing is the induction welding process because this may also sometime not be commonly taught to the learners at the ug level second is that induction welding can be successfully used for joining of thermoplastic parts there we have already tried to see the application areas also that it is not only that it will join the two plastic parts only it can be used for joining a plastic part to a metallic grill also second and third thing we have tried to see very small or maybe 
two or three guidelines only that we must keep in mind when we are joining the parts or when we are designing the parts which are going to be joined using the induction welding process especially for plastics. So, with this I think a basic information has been generated Maybe the learners I will again suggest you there is lot of literature available very good books available on design for manufacturing. So, you must look at the various books and may try to uh, find out may try to look out for the other guidelines which may be followed when you are designing a plastic part which is to be joined to a similar material or to a different material using the process of induction welding. In our subsequent sessions our target will be to learn the other guidelines the other processes that are used for joining of plastic. So, this week our focus primarily will be to learn the various joining strategies for different types of engineering materials. Thank you.